we will discuss about lesions of sensory system in the spinal cord which include deafferentation that is dorsal nerve root lesion syringomyelia tabs dorsalis disseminated multiple sclerosis and subacute combined degeneration of spinal cord now we discuss about lesions of sensory system in the spinal cord one of the lesion that is deafferentation also known as dorsal root lesion that is lesion in the dorsal root what are the effects of the lesion there is loss of all the sensation loss of extraceptive sensation that produces anesthesia and analgesia loss of conscious muscle sense and that produces ataxia ataxia means lack of coordination also there is loss of unconscious muscle sense that is carried out by spino cerebellar tract extraceptive sensation and conscious kinesthetic sensations they are carried out by dorsal column pathway all these pathways they originate from dorsal root ganglion as we have discussed so if there is damage here then all the tracks they get damaged and we have all these sensations so whenever there is loss of unconscious or subconscious kinesthetic sensation that produces hypotonia and atonia also visceral senses are lost and this leads to development of trophic changes in various joints because reflexes they also require sensory receptors and afferent fibers so if this afferent fibers are damaged then that results in loss of reflexes both superficial as well as deep reflexes are lost muscle tone is also lost why because muscle tone is because of continuous discharge of the gamma motor neurons and for continuous discharge of gamma motor neurons we require afferent fibers and due to loss of this afferent sensation muscle tone is also lost along with that there is marked weakness in the movements of the body part and that is due to loss of afferent impulses from joints and muscles next is diseases of spinal cord one of the disease is syringomyelia it is a rare disease it involves mainly you can see gray matter here in this condition there is excessive overgrowth of neuroglial tissue with presence of cavity you can see here first neuroglial tissues they grow followed by cavity formation in the gray matter commonly it affects the gray matter around the central canal of the spinal cord and it involves mainly cervical enlargement of the spinal cord which are the clinical features first we discuss about the sensory features one of the feature is dissociated anesthesia what do we mean by dissociated anesthesia you can see here there is loss of you can see here suppose cervical segments are affected then what happens upper limb and upper part chest sensations are lost but dissociated anesthesia means there is loss of pain and temperature sensation whereas touch sensation that is retained why is it so because touch sensation is carried out by two pathway dorsal column pathway and spinothalamic tract dorsal column pathway carries fine touch sensation and spinothalamic tract they carry crude touch sensation so here what happens the person is having loss of pain temperature and crude touch sensation why because crossed fibers of the spinothalamic tract they are damaged as we have discussed spinothalamic fibers they cross and they ascend up here 
so when there is formation of cavity this fibers they get damaged fine touch fibers they are not lost why because here the fine touch fibers they are carried out by dorsal column tract and as we have discussed dorsal column fibers they ascend on the same side and they reach to fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus in the medulla oblongata and from which second order neurons arise and then then they cross so here if cavity is formed here the fine touch fibers they cannot be damaged so they escape from the damage and therefore the person is having loss of pain temperature and crude touch but fine touch sensations they are intact symptoms they are bilateral and usually they occur in hands and arms now motor features motor features are because of spread of this gliosis and cavity formation you can see here initially when the gliosis is small and cavity when it involves only anterior horn you can see here this lower motor neurons they are affected and therefore the paralysis is lower motor neuron type and the paralysis of lower motor neuron type is flaccid paralysis in later stages you can see there is increase in the gliosis and therefore there is involvement of corticospinal tract pyramidal and extra pyramidal fibers they are also involved and that results in paralysis of upper motor neuron type that is spastic paralysis of legs next is tabs dorsalis it is slowly progressive degenerative nervous disorder in which there is bilateral degeneration of posterior nerve roots you can see here as well as there is degeneration of posterior funiculi that is fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus it is caused by syphilis and it affects motor as well as sensory functions what is the cause here because dorsal root fibers are affected most of the time sometimes lateral fibers are also affected and dorsal white column fibers are also affected clinical features of the disease here there is lightning pain occurs there is intermittent attacks of this lightning pain and the person is having pain free interval in between the pain attack and what is the cause of pain it is due to stimulation of pain fibers which are present in the dorsal nerve roots here along with that there is loss of all sensations because as we have discussed all the sensations they enter through dorsal root ganglion and because of damage to dorsal root all the sensations are also lost other clinical features they are due to loss or decrease of pain sensibility one of the feature is charcot's joint there is trophic disturbances in the form of perforating ulcers of the skin at pressure points because loss of pain sensation there is injury commonly to the joint commonly joints of the foot they are affected and because of the injury the person is having ulcer of the skin along with that because of repeated injuries joints are also you can say deformed another you can see here there is ulcer and there is fracture or you can say deformity of the joint okay another clinical feature is anesthesia 
of central part of the face why is it so because of involvement of fifth cranial nerve which has three divisions ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular fifth one is trigeminal nerve when the trigeminal nerve gets damaged there is anesthesia of central part of the face also the person is having anesthesia at upper chest also at the inner border of the hands around anus and over legs and this is also due to involvement of dorsal nerve roots in various spinal segments either it is cervical thoracic segments also may be damage to the lumbosacral regions the person is also having loss of deep sensation that is deep sensations they are position vibration sense stereognosis discrimination of touch they all are lost most of the time this sensation of same side are lost because they are carried out by dorsal column pathway fine touch tactile localization proprioception vibration conscious kinesthetic sensation so this all are carried out by dorsal column pathway and they are lost on the same side below the level of lesion there is also loss of superficial and deep reflexes why because sensations are lost and the reflex requires the sensory pathway when the sensory pathways are damaged then the reflex arc cannot be completed also there is marked disturbance of voluntary movement because for voluntary movement motor neuronal action requires completion of the reflex arc another clinical feature is sensory ataxia as we have discussed ataxia that is lack of coordination of the voluntary movement here voluntary movement is not been coordinated and that results in sensory ataxia means there is damage to the dorsal column pathway and that produces sensory ataxia loss of position and vibration sense below the level of lesion here how can we diagnose sensory ataxia by rombach sign rombach sign is positive means when the subject is standing with eyes open subject can maintain the balance but when eyes are closed you can see here subject falls down because the sensory tracts they are not carrying the sensation properly that results in lack of coordination and lack of balance another is stamping gait here the picture shows stamping gait the name itself suggest like make, making a stamp so the patient walks on a broad base you can see here and legs of the patient they are placed apart and eyes they are fixed to the ground that is to correct the step patient raises the leg extensively high and then slops the feet on the ground like making a stamp this is all about the features of tabs tarsalis next is disseminated multiple sclerosis here there is demyelination in brain and spinal cord dissemination the meaning of disseminated is wide spread throughout the organ and meaning of sclerosis is increase in the connective tissue so disseminated multiple sclerosis means wide spread multiple connective tissues they are formed instead of myelin sheath so here there is widespread disseminated involvement of white matter this is crippling disease and it is associated with delayed or blocked conduction in demyelinated axons the disease is characterized by 
neuroglial cells that replaces nerve cells it is due to proliferation of neuroglial cells which leads to focal inflammation as well as demyelination and gliosis or which is known as scarring gray as well as white matter both get involved and there is slow demyelination there is also patchy destruction of myelin sheath in the central nervous system causes for the disease the disease is considered as autoimmune disease there is also genetic predisposition and environmental factors they also play an important role like early exposure to virus for example epstein barr virus measles herpes chickenpox and influenza virus symptoms symptoms they are according to whether ascending or descending pathway is involved common symptoms are mild disturbances in the sensation of arm face and legs there is also weakness as well as disturbance of maintenance of posture there is double vision which is known as diplopia which is followed by partial blindness also there is vertigo and ataxia but they are less common symptoms other symptoms are tremors muscle spasm and fatigue person is also having difficulty in speech as well as difficulty in performing day to day activities another disease is subacute combined degeneration of spinal cord it is usually associated with pernicious anemia and it is due to lack of intrinsic factor which is secreted by parietal cells of the stomach and this intrinsic factor is required for the absorption of vitamin b12 from the digestive tract clinical features here there is bilateral degeneration you can see here bilateral degeneration of white fibers of dorsal as well as lateral columns of the spinal cord it is known as combined degeneration and commonly it affects lumbosacral segments of the spinal cord manifestation there is loss of position as well as vibration sensation from the lower limb you can see here the person is also having signs of upper motor neuron type of lesion person shows spasticity also there is exaggerated tendon reflexes and there is positive babinski sign now how it differs from upper motor neuronal lesion here in upper motor neuronal lesion all the symptoms they are they are uh, observed on the site of the tract affected whereas in case of subacute combined degeneration upper motor neuronal type of lesion signs they are seen bilaterally So this is all about lesions of sensory system in spinal cord. Thank you.